Hello, I'm Edie Lewis and welcome back to my channel and it's my four year anniversary. So, welcome to the show and we're going to do a Q&A, but before we do that, we have a few things that we're going to do. So first off, I want to thank each and every one of you for um, being a part of this channel, um, whether if you're a viewer, a subscriber, long time, new, it, it doesn't matter because um, you're a big part of this channel. Uh, you're part of what keeps me going besides, you know, keeping it fun because I do this for fun. This is uh, purely a hobby. Um, but it's just something I enjoy to do and um, without you guys, it's... Uh, it's not as fun, so thank each and every one of you. And um, there are a few special thanks I want to make. Um, I want to thank um, author D.L. Tillery, the mistress of horror herself, as well as the seeker of Nim, our dear friend Amiria. They have helped me this year, um, helped to inspire me. They have looked at some poems for me um, and uh, given me feedback. And I thank them immensely. And D.L. Tillery, she has her wonderful prompts that she does for the PAX Poetry, uh, PAX Poetry Prompt Sundays at the beginning of every month. If you are not subscribed to her channel, please subscribe to her channel. And she has uh, not only the PAX Panic Poetry dedicated to our friend PAX Panic, but she also has the, um, the writer's uh, blog. She's got the Mistress in Candlelight. She's got Lair the Mistress. She does poetry. She's got all kinds of things and she's prepping for some releases next year, which I'm very, very excited for. And also please subscribe to The Seeker of Nim. Nymeria is, uh, she's a great friend of mine and she has some wonderful poetry out there. She does the poetry reading. She does tag videos and she does some reviews. She does some fun stuff out there. And she's rather raw and honest, and that's, you know, honesty is the best policy, and also, you know, there's lots of things to love about her, and the honesty, the creativity, all of it is just absolutely awesome. So, special thanks to both of them. Um, let's see, a uh, special thanks also to uh, Regina at Regina's Haunted Library, who invited me earlier, earlier this year to, um, well, actually it was at this time, around this time last year, to be honest, um, she had invited me to be a co-host of the Gothic Hearts Reading Challenge, and, um, I got to work with, uh, a couple of very lovely ladies, um, Aphrodite Lee and, uh, D.L. Tillery, the Mistress of Heart, along with Regina, and we had a lot of fun reading Gothic romance and, uh, filling the prompts, making our running from, you know, running from a castle or a house, you know, Gothic romance covers, which would be really awesome if we could write stories for those, but who knows, maybe someday. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun, so I thank Regina immensely for, uh, inviting me to be part of, um, that event, and, um, Let's see. Um, I also want to thank everyone out there who does events just in general because you guys are amazing. I don't know how you guys do it. Um, for example, the uh, Old School April. That was a lot of fun um, and it gave me some of my... Uh, I, it was a lot of fun to take part in and to read, you know, for, you know, read for the prompts, watch TV shows for the prompts and whatnot, and also to watch some of the uh, reading sprints and to take part in the, the reading and productivity of them. It was a lot of fun. I'd been wanting to uh, attend some reading sprints, but every time the the people who would do them most often, I was usually at work, so I was unable to join them, but um, I'm really glad that uh, I was able to take part in those and watch the shenanigans that they were doing on screen. It was it was awesome. It was hilarious. Um, some really good times. Um, but yeah, it's you know to you know everyone out there who does stuff like that. You know I don't know how you guys do it because uh, with busy schedules and life the way it is these days, it just uh, enthralls me. Just absolutely. Um, all right, so this next bit is going to be a little um, 
heavily emotional for many of us on here, um, I want to do a moment of silence. So I'm going to do 60 seconds of silence. And this is in honor of our dear friend, Pax Panic, who we lost back in May. And um, she meant a lot to us on this community. She inspired us. She um, made us smile. Uh, she, you know, thrilled us with her um, poetry readings and her uh, reading updates and her Pax's Little Library of Horrors, where she introduced us to some creepy and um, thought-provoking uh, children's books that really made you think and dig deeper into them. And she was truly the emerald gem of this community, and it hit so many of us so hard when we lost her. So I would like to take this time to do a moment of silence. Thank you for taking part in the moment of silence for our friend Pax Panic. And um, right now, I'm going to move into our Q&A. So a few weeks ago, I posted a an announcement, and also I talked about it on a couple of videos, um, that I'm going to do Q&A. If anybody has any further questions for me, you just pop them down to the comments, and I'll, uh, I'll, mess I'll reply to you, not message, reply to you with the answers. So, let's take a look. So, um, this one is, I'm just going to go straight down, so it's whatever order they're in, so they're going to be in random order, and I have some of them that are on the post, and some of them that are also on some videos, and so here we go. This first one is from our friend M at Dark Violet Dreams. Happy anniversary. Which book books made a big impact on your life? Ooh, okay. Um, to be uh, upfront with everybody, I did not think of answers for all these because I thought, you know, let's be in the moment. And some of them, I'm like, oh, I know exactly the answer to this. So, what books made a big impact on my life? Um, I would probably say, and this one came later on, and I wish it had come earlier in my life, and I've talked about this book many times, and it's my favorite book. And that is the um, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Um, I wish this book had come out earlier, and I feel like it would have made an even bigger impact. But um, it, it made, you know, its obvious impacts on me. Uh, the character struggling with uh, something very personal um, that also I also struggled with and um, still occasionally struggle with myself being a part of the LGBT community. Um, but, yeah, that, that's a major book that impacted me. And also, a book I read after that would be The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which is not, my, not one of my top books. It is my favorite film, though. But the book did make, you know, an impact on me. Um in many of the same ways. It kind of, you know, be yourself, participate, and I think I'd read that one before I even started my booktube channel, before I even popped up on here. Um, because, 
yeah, I, I was I was a very quiet person in school and also in daily life. I'm fairly quiet if I don't know you. If I know you, I'm way more uh, outgoing and more um, social. Uh, but I'm, you know, pretty reserved, pretty quiet. Um, but I think it kind of helped me to, you know, step outside of my box. I mean, that's still hard today, but I mean, it helps quite a bit. So I would say both those books impacted me. All right, this next one is from Nemiria at The Secret of Nim. Happy early anniversary. Ooh, I get to pick your brain. Um, how long have you been reading, watching gothic romance? As the first question on here. The second one is, what do you think are the best books for someone to start with the gothic genre? Who's your favorite Dark Shadows character? That's kind of ironic because the day I'm the day that I'm recording this is actually the 16th, and that's well, we'll get into that. Uh, favorite gothic movies? Haha, ha, I could come up with more, but I'll leave it there. Um, okay, so how long have I been reading slash watching gothic romance? Um, since probably middle school, actually. So however long that's been. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, since at least middle school, because um, I was introduced to more or less what gothic romance was through Dark Shadows. Now, I had been interested in gothic earlier than that. I just didn't really know exactly what it was. Uh, gothic horror, that is, because I was interested in Dracula and Frankenstein and, you know, like the ones from the very Victorian gothic era. Um through, you know, the movies with Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. Those were, um, you know, kind of my first introductions to Gothic. And also the Edgar Allan Poe books, uh, well, the Edgar Allan Poe stories, sorry, and the Edgar Allan Poe movies that Vincent Price had starred in, such as The Raven and the Pit and the Pendulum, House of Usher, so on and so forth. So, um, but yeah, gothic romance since at least middle school. And also reading them uh, since middle school because, um, well, no, I maybe I didn't read any in middle school. Maybe I didn't actually start reading until high school when I was reading my first Dark Shadows books um, and also Jane Eyre, which of course to me is the epitome of gothic romance. And the epitome of gothic to me is literally Jane Eyre by uh, Charlotte Bronte. Highly recommend. Um, let's see, what was the next bit of these questions? It keeps kicking me out of it after it goes blank for a bit. Um, well, I guess that kind of answers that second question of what do you think are the best books for someone to start with goth with the gothic genre? Um, really stuff like Jane Eyre, um, Wuthering Heights, both by the Brontes, um, Dracula and uh, by Bram Stoker and Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Edgar Allan Poe. Though those those aren't books, though. Um, but if you want to go back to the beginning, I would also. Uh, and this one's not one of my favorites, and this is the Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. I might reread it someday, and I might like it a little better. It was not what I was expecting, but if you want to go back to the beginning, definitely go to uh, The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. Um, Alright, so who's your favorite Dark Shadows character? This has changed over the years. So when I started watching Dark Shadows about, what, 16, 17 years ago? Uh, that's how long I've been a fan. So, um, it was of course Barnabas Collins. That's kind of changed. The Salem, uh, the Salem branch, sorry, wrong book. Um, Angelique's Descent by Laura Parker kind of changed that for me. Because uh, I started to see Barnabas in a different light. He was, you know, not as nice of a guy and made some horrible decisions. I mean, who hasn't? Um, and he's just not, you know, what we thought he was when we first, well, when we first meet him, and then when we re-first meet him in 1795, uh, yeah, 
he made some really bad decisions and did some horrible things. So Barnabas was kind of out, which this also changed my look of Angelique. Now, though I don't condone a lot of her actions, I understand where she's coming from. And so I sympathize a lot with Angelique. But I have to say, my favorite character has more or less shifted to Quentin Collins. Um, of course, a character that made a lot of bad decisions and uh, definitely got his comeuppance and still pays for it later on in the audio dramas and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, Quentin Collins has kind of become my favorite. And I've named uh, in my book, The Curse of um, Rich House, the hero is actually named Quentin. I, of course, named him off of uh, Quentin Collins. And I have a little... I have a little teddy bear that sits on our headboard, and uh, his name is actually Quentin also, so. Uh, Quentin is kind of a favorite name of mine, so. I'll probably use it again for something in the future, I just don't know what, but who knows. Um, knocked me out again. Favorite gothic movies. Um, of course, the classic uh, Universal Studios, Frankenstein and Dracula, and the Wolfman. Um, House of Usher, uh, starring Vincent Price, directed by Roger Corman. Uh, my absolute favorite gothic uh, film, which is also gothic romance and gothic horror, uh, married together, and that would be... Um, Crimson Peak, which was directed by Guillermo del Toro, uh, excellent film, beautiful, um, every scene in that movie is absolutely gorgeous, uh, and the colors, I could go on about that movie for a while, and I've done a review on it, um, and I've read the novelization, and it's absolutely fantastic, uh, but, yeah, those are, you know, those are at least a handful of my favorite Gotham, oh, Sorry, there's one more I want I want to absolutely mention, and that is Rebecca from 1940, directed by Alfred Hitchcock with Laurence Olivier and Joan Fontaine. Absolutely, you know, wonderful film. Okay, let's move on with the next question. I don't want this video to be overly long, but it'll be a little while. Um, what hobbies do you have outside of BookTube, and what is one book you constantly uh, recommend to people? Hmm. Well, there's a few books that I highly do recommend to people, like, over and over again. And one of them is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I never really recommend my favorite book to people, though. But yeah, definitely that one. And I, I am often recommending Jane Eyre to people when they're looking for something good and they want to read more of the classics. I always say, Jane Eyre, read Jane Eyre, um, because I love Jane Eyre. Uh, hobbies outside of booktube, I've really fallen off of a lot of those hobbies. Um, I have picked up a couple of my crafting hobbies recently around Halloween time and also during the holiday season making some gifts. Um, so some crafting, but that's kind of rare, and a little bit of sewing is included in, the, in that because I have been working on some sewing-related sewing gifts. So, uh, but yeah, not, not a lot of, not a lot of everyday hobbies because I mostly read and um just do my daily life stuff you know that we all have to you know go through unfortunately all right this question is from bookstalgic and it is what is your favorite place you've ever visited or traveled to on vacation uh i would have to say it probably was disney world in orlando florida um because that was quite an experience. That is one of the, I think that may be the farthest place I've ever traveled. And it was a lot of fun. I loved the Magic Kingdom. That was my favorite place. We went there two different days. Absolutely loved it. We also went to the, um, to Epcot and the, uh, the Animal Kingdom too. Which were both very fun. I loved the Around the World in Epcot. And, um... All three of those parks were fantastic. We did not get to go to the Studios one, but that's, you know, but uh, that was fine. I don't think any of us were overly interested in going to that one, but yeah, Magic Kingdom at Disney World, definitely my favorite. All right, this next one is from Just Book Girl TV. 
What kind of music do you like to listen to? Do you have any pets? I unfortunately don't have any animals. Um, the apartment where I live, they don't allow pets. Um, now there is a cat that will wander around, you know, lives nearby and wanders by and we do occasionally feed it. But, um, music? Um, I don't know if I really have specific genre anymore of music because I kind of listen to whatever. I used to listen to a lot of classic rock, uh, Beatles, Paul McCartney and Wings, um, Alice Cooper, stuff like that. Uh, anymore, I listen to, you know, whatever plays at work a lot of times or like uh, parodies of songs like Translator Fails. Um, but, uh, which has a great channel, it's really entertaining. But, um, I've more recent, like, most recently I've gotten into, like, Kate Bush songs, um, because there, there's a few that I end up really liking of her songs, such as Babushka and, um, Wuthering Heights. These are songs I've gotten into over the past couple of years. Um, I like a little bit of, um, Susie and the Banshees. Um, but yeah, it kind of a mix. There's not really any uh, genre that I absolutely, you know, really, really listen to. I used to do a lot, I listen, I used to listen to a lot, if I can talk, um, uh, pop punk. So like, uh, Panic at the Disco and, um, Fall Out Boy. And my favorite band, when I last had a favorite band, I don't know if I really have one anymore, was 21 Pilots. Um... But I haven't really listened to a lot of that in like the past year or year, year and a half or so. So I'm not really sure if I have a favorite band anymore or specific type of music, but it's just kind of a mix. This next one is from Bad is Rad 2, and she's, uh, first of all, happy anniversary, my sweet friend, since you enjoy vampire books. If you were able to play the part of a vampire, or a character in a book, what would it be? Who would you love to meet and have your book sign, uh, sign, uh, book signed by them? Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm tripping over my words here. Um, hmm, I would love to play a vampire. I'm, uh, I've often said on and off throughout the years, because I've gone back and forth, I'd love to be a vampire, you know, if it was able, if you're able to become, you know, turn into vampire and have the supernatural abilities and stuff like that. I think that'd be really cool and the immortality, though there are some drawbacks about that, but you know what, I think I'd be willing to go through the uh, torture of that. Um, character in a book, you know what? Probably see where this is going. Um, I wouldn't mind being a character in a gothic romance. I don't know about the main character, but maybe one of the side characters or someone who's, you know, assisting, who helps them to try and figure out things. But probably, you know, someone in like a gothic romance, maybe a gothic horror, you know, something like that. Um, I wouldn't mind being in a vampire book, but I really wouldn't want to get killed. So more or less, I think I'd like to be like in a supporting role. Um, I definitely don't want to be a main character. Um, who would you love to meet and have your book signed by them? Um, well, the, basically anybody who I have a, you know, that I own one of their books that I'd love to meet in person and get signed. I do have some signed books and some of them were signed directly to me by, uh, author friends who, um, I've not met in person. Uh, and I have some books that I found that were signed, and I was very surprised that that happened, but, um, uh, just most generally anybody who I'm, you know, friends with who's an author who writes, I would love to meet them in person and have them, you know, you know, sign a book, you know, in front, you know, like one that I bought and I brought, you know, brought to them and say, hey, would you mind signing this for me? Um, sorry, I keep looking at it and make sure my screen doesn't turn off again. Um, but famous, uh, famous author-wise, I don't know if I have one that's currently living. Because I would love to have had one signed by Laura Parker. I would have, uh, I do have a signed Anne Rice book, but it was one that I found. Um, and it's stored away, not here, 
Um, I can't remember where it's at exactly, but it's stored away safely. Um, but unfortunately I never got to meet her either. But, um, yeah, famous, famous wise, I don't know, probably Stephen King, because he's still around, and I have read some of his stuff, and I have liked what I've read, um, thus far. For the most part, because there was, um, that one book I wasn't overly fond of, in retrospect, anyway. Alright, so... Alright, this one is from Rod Gilly Writer. Question for your anniversary show. You are a writer of both poetry and prose. Who and what most inspires your writing? Uh, Poetry-wise, I have a few people. Um, our dear Pax Panic, uh, she uh, kind of inspired me to get back into poetry because I hadn't written poetry since like college and high school. I think I had tried to a few times since, but um, hadn't really taken off till now. Um, author Deal Tillery and uh, even um, Namiria as well. Um, and Rice was a huge influence on me writing, and, um, to an extent, so was Marilyn Ross, because without Marilyn Ross and some of the other writers that I read that was similar to his work, um, I don't know if I would have gone in the direction of writing my gothic romance, uh, so definitely them. Um, I'm not sure if there was any other writers that really really inspired me. I don't know. I may have to remedy that more in the comments. Um, I'm not sure. All right, David of David's Book Reviews says, I have been trying to think of a question to ask you for your anniversary video. I have been trying to read more diverse stuff. My question would be, what LGBTQ horror novels would you recommend? Merry Christmas. Uh, happy holidays to you, David. And, um, I've read a few LGBTQ horror books. Um, uh, I would recommend, so far out of them, Wittershins by uh, Jordan Hawk, or Jordan L. Hawk. Um, it's very good, and it's also the gothic genre, and it's uh, kind of Lovecraftian. I would, you know, I'd definitely check it out for that. Um, also, I just recently finished reading this book, like, a, about a week or two ago, and it's called Season's Bleedings, and it's a holiday horror book. Um, it's not just LGBTQ, but um, the main characters more or less are. Um, uh, and uh, more on that book, actually, in a future video, by the way. Uh, and it's by Brian Ellis, I do believe. And, uh, it was quite good. It was, uh, quite shocking. It's a slasher, uh, novel. And, of course, it's, you know, very holiday-ish. But, uh, yeah, it, it was very good. Alright, and we have one more question. And then I have, uh, a quick little introduction. And then I think we'll wrap up this video. So... This is from Albert Has Time At Last. I thought of a question, because he had uh, posted in another, uh, on my community post that he was going to try and think of one. Um, you're throwing a party. Which four authors, living or dead, do you invite? Okay. Hmm. Well, okay, so four. All right. Um, Anne Rice, for sure. Hands down. Edgar Allan Poe. Jane Austen. I know this is a weird bunch. <laughs> um... Let's throw someone in there who's living. Um, Clive Barker. I know, that's kind of an odd bunch of people, but, you know, I'm kind of curious, because I could, you know, I could ask them some questions. I could see how they're going to interact with each other, especially. 
because I that would make me curious. And uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I know any, you know, well, at least a few of them. I don't know what their uh, reaction is to the other's writing. Uh, uh, at least a few of them anyway. But yeah, I think that'd be very interesting to see, you know, how they would interact. I could ask them some questions, maybe get some discussions and see what happens. Hopefully nothing bad would happen. Hopefully no drama, but it would be interesting. So I know, weird, but hmm. All right, thank you to each and every one of you who posted a question. I hope I answered those to the best of my ability. Um, if anybody has any further questions, please feel free to pop them down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so, oh, something I did forget to mention. Usually for my anniversary videos, I usually talk about my top reads of the year. That's actually gonna get moved this year to January. Uh, well, it's gonna get moved this time to January, so you're gonna have to wait till next year to hear about those. I think I pretty much know what they are, but um, I need to look through and I'll uh, get back to you on that. So I want to uh, finish this video off really quickly with an introduction of a new figure to the library. I'm not sure where this figure's gonna go, but I'd like, to, I'd like you all to meet Victor. So I have this steampunk skull, very cool. Um, his eyes do light up. I'm not sure if they're going to. Um, well, let's see, sometimes one will light up, sometimes both, and sometimes none, so we'll see. Oh, oh, there we go. One is. I have gotten his second eye to light up once. Oh, oh, there we go, there we go. That was perfect. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Victor. So this is Victor. I'm not sure where he's gonna go. I mean, cause we have, you know, some of my other figures, you know, and you can't see some of the others up above and... I can't point, apparently. <laughs> right there. He's right there. That's Igor. Um, anyway, so thank you all for joining me on this video and thank you for, uh, for all your support. It's been four years and now we're gonna start a new journey. I'm not sure where the channel's gonna go. I'm not sure what my plans are. There are some things I would really like to get back into that I have not had time for. So that may mean reading a little less or reading not so long of stuff. So I may have to delve more into short stories. I'm not sure. There is an event that's coming up soonish that I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about yet. So I'm not gonna talk about that, but it's on my one of my favorite topics. Um, I, I would also kind of like to get back to some of my roots on this channel. So if you're with me at the very beginning, you know that, um, of my channel that is, um, that I start out talking about gothic literature. I kind of would like to get back into that, especially being a gothicist. Um, but yeah, so anyway, thank you each and every one of you. And I will see you all very soon. Uh, stay spooky. Uh, stay safe. Haunted holidays, everybody, no matter what holiday you celebrate. I personally celebrate Yule, Yuletide. So, um, yeah. I uh, hope everybody's having a great holiday. And I will see you all very, very soon. Until next time. Bye-bye.